Today we're going to look at the retraction videos that were made on the 17th of September in 2014. These videos have been the subject of a huge amount of debate as some people believe that while the little girl was quite forward in saying that they had been made to say what they were said by Abraham, the little, girl, the little boy was a little bit less so and seemed kind of resistant to the idea of saying that it hadn't happened. So we're going to look into that and see whether that's actually the case. I, as you probably know, will argue that the little boy actually didn't say that it didn't happen. He did some pretty normal childlike behavior and tried to get out of being accused of lying and he had extremely good reason for that. So let's get started. The first thing to ha that comes clear from these interviews, they are in a different interview venue and they are quite short com compared to the other ones. They The children have been picked up from their foster care. They've been in foster care for about six days. Now, they, prior to being in foster care, were in the care of Abraham Christie and Ella Draper. As we know, Abraham beat the living crap out of those children, and I don't say that lightly. He was brutal. He, what he did to them was described in the High Court judgment as nothing short of torture. That is not too strong a word for what happened. They were hauled out of bed in the middle of the night for questioning sessions. They were deprived of food. They were kicked. They were punched. They were pushed into walls. They were threatened with being buried alive in the desert. Abraham put his hand over their mouths to suffocate them if they didn't say what he wanted them to say. He constantly accused them of lying and basically messed with their ideas of reality, I think is the best way to say it. So now they'd had six days of respite from that. They had six days of not having been in the vicinity of Abraham and Ella, and perhaps at this point they're feeling a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more cheerful, and a little bit more safe. Let's just go quickly over the video, over the um, transcripts of the videos. I found transcripts online that were made by Kane Slater. Interestingly, he left out certain words and phrases that might have been useful in helping people understand what was going on, and he left out the entire last five minutes of the video with the little boy in which he's just exultant at having been believed by the police officer and feeling as though he's finally free. So they are in Suffolk and it's the 17th of September about 10:30 in the morning and the interviewer who is the police officer who has done all the other interviews, he's the uh, child abuse um, investigation team officer, he comes in and the, the two of them are talking and clearly they had been talking about something in the car and he had told the, told the children to wait until they got to the police station so that they, they could record it properly because that's proper protocol. Uh, the little girl says some of, the, some of them are and some of them are not true that Abraham told us to say some of them are not true. So even she at the very beginning is not willing to say the whole thing was a crock of shit. She's just not willing to say that. She wants to say some of them aren't true. You know, maybe some things are, some things aren't. And let's just think about that in terms of how children, every, everyday average children, you, me, any children we might have, how they might react when they're accused of something. For instance, you tell your child to pick up the toys in their room and you come back two hours later and you say there's still toys all over the floor of your room like you're looking at the evidence you're saying there's toys all over everything and the child says well I picked some of them up well no you really didn't they're all exactly the same as they were well okay some but not all okay well no but that's not really true is it well 
I thought about picking them up. You know, so you get these sort of layers of excuses of why they didn't actually do what they were told to do or why they didn't, you know, why they didn't pick up their toys, why they didn't tell the full truth. You get these kind of, you know, just subtle backing out of of this of the situation so that they don't get into trouble and that is a big motivation for any child as you probably remember from your own childhood getting into trouble was never fun you did not want the adults yelling at you or worse in the case of these two children they were used to adults actually hitting them or doing all sorts of other things to them whenever they said something that the adult didn't like so they're walking into the situation with the police officer, they are still in that headspace, even though they've been away from Abraham and Ella for six days. I think it's safe to say that you don't just suddenly go, boop, okay, I'm fine, I'm over it now. That's not how it works. You know, there's still going to be some leftover, you know, not really wanting to come out with too much to that will contradict what you've already been told to say because you're going to get in trouble. It's as simple as that. And trouble for them meant something very, very serious. That was not just, it was not just someone's going to yell at us. It's someone's going to hit us, hurt us badly. It's going to cause, you know, cuts on our chin and burst our eardrums and, you know, all sorts of things. Um, contusions, you know, there, there were giant bruises on, on the little girl's forehead, all of that stuff. So serious stuff, and they know it. The little girl says, so what shall we start off by saying? Well, shall I remind you, we was talking a lot about food in the car. I think that was, and she laughs, and, and he says, I think that was 99% of the journey, wasn't it? Yes, all rubbish, she says, laughing. And then there was the one other thing you told me about, um, that Abraham told us some things to tell, which is not true. Yeah, because you mentioned about Zorro and about heads being cut off, didn't you? Now, the people who believe in the hoax get a great laugh out of this whole Zorro thing. And I can understand that, because, like, yeah, where would they get the idea for, you know, a... I don't know what what they would even call it, like a giant freaking cult with, you know, babies being held up by strings and you know, having their heads cut off and so forth by watching something called The Mask of Zorro. But I think, I think she explains it quite well. She says um, that Abraham lent them the movie. Um, and, she, and she says, yes, that's because I had an idea. So then I told Abraham, and then Abraham said, good, then do that. Tell that to the police. So in other words, she, she had an idea that she got from the movie. It wasn't the whole story. It was an idea. It was something, it was a detail that she was going to add. I believe this was the detail of the head being um, cut off and, and basically um, put in water and then they, and then they drink the water. Um, that seems to be what she was talking about. So, and she talks about that a little bit later on. She describes the entire movie, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious and just in that childlike way where you know she's saying and then the good guy did this and then the bad guy did this and then the good guy and you know but it's clear that she understood most of what was going on she was just a little foggy on some of the details so this the interviewer says okay so you're watching that film and you said Abraham's come in and said who's been touching you yeah he so why do you think he said that and she says I don't know he just came in he didn't just come in, he came in with my mum, and he said, I think he was planning to get me and Q in trouble, I think. So right away she thinks he's doing this literally to cause them trouble and to, you know, she's not wrong. He just said, who's touching you? Who learned? Who had learned you to touch each other? And she, t she made up she she told this whole story about how a friend at school had done it and she'd seen it on her iPad and, and you know, uh, porn pornographic images on her iPad and so forth and so on. And the friend had bargained with her for a bag of candy but then failed to pay up. And, you know, so it was very, um, you know, she, she clearly has, has thought a lot about this. And whether that's actually the case or not um, and whether the friend at school 
showed her pornography or not. I mean, that is actually not, these days, unfortunately, it's not very abnormal for children to have access to porn. Anyone can. Um, I have talked to parents whose, you know, six, seven, eight-year-old kids have come to them wondering what the heck this is all about, and they have to explain because they see things online that they really shouldn't and that should they should be protected from. Then after he said, who learned you to touch and all that, and then I said, so-and-so learned me to touch Q, but then he didn't believe me, so then he said, no, it's someone else. And then I just said, uh, it was, it was just so-and-so and my friends, and they, they taught me to do that. And he said, no, it's your dad. So then I just, I just, I just really got blank. So she didn't know what to say. Um, I just thought, why would he say my dad, even though it's not true? Okay, so did your dad teach you? No, she says. Okay, so stuff that happened in the church and the swimming pool and the school, did any of that really happen? And she rubs her eyes and just goes, absolutely not. So then she says, no, that was all made up. It was all made up? He told me to say that. And I said, why, Abraham? That's not true, though. And then he said, yes, that is true, so don't lie, so say that to the police. And so how do you think about, because you told me about, like, they all dance around with baby skulls, and she says, yeah. How did you think of that idea? Because he went... He went like this. They dance around with baby skulls in the church, don't they? And that's when Abraham that's what Abraham told me and then I just no they don't and he said, "Yes they do. Stop lying, you little brat." That's what he told me and she sounds quite indignant about this, as well she might. Okay, so he's told you, he said, and then after I kept on arguing with him cuz that's where she gets the uh, the reputation that Abe pins on her of being a liar. Um, is that she dared to argue with him, the great and wonderful Abe, um, that I didn't. And then he said, I'm not arguing with you. You did do that, you stupid little cunt. And that clearly, deeply offended her. She just looked sad, just unbelievable. She looks down and she's just, it's sad. It's its really, really sad. Um, so, okay, so that's not very nice, is it? Well, I thought, I just thought I'd say, yes, he did do, that my father did do that. In other words, she agreed with him because she understood that there would be consequences if she didn't. Okay, all right. So what happened then about the stuff that happened in the swimming pool? It's not true. Not, and he, he says not true. He takes us to the swimming pool, but then he just plays with us at the, at the balls there in the pool and the other people are there. And, and then, okay, so what about all your teachers and all that? They didn't do it. They, and... Then she says, they have no, they've never even met my, Mr. H, he's a teacher. He's never even met my dad. He doesn't even know his name. Have you ever been to his house? No. So that description you gave of the house? So that's why, remember that time, that time when we, when you took us to show us, took me and, um, me and Q to show you the house? Yeah, that's why we didn't show the house, because we didn't know where, it, and she says, so we just thought, we just thought to do like a spare place. Yeah, but I don't even know what, which house, so we just, we just chose any. In other words, it's like they're desperate. They're out in the car with the police. They're in a complete double bind, and children are, you know, b believe that the police have the power to throw them in prison, as Abraham tried to claim Jean Clément could do. That was the first thing he said to Jean Clément. You know, so the police can put them in prison, but if they... Don't tell what Abe tells them to say. Abe will put them in an even worse prison, the prison of having to live with him. So it's really, they're, they're between a rock and a hard place. There's just no other way to describe it. It's absolutely tragic when I think about it. It's, it's, it's so upsetting. So, and then what happened? Because you went out before that, didn't you, with your mum? Yeah, that's why he was so fed up of me and Q that we didn't show the house. That's why we keep on like saying it's over there. And but then she said, my mom and Abraham said, no, that's a building where people work. And after that, I just got in trouble. What do you mean you got in trouble? So then they hurt me a lot. And then they said, let's go back home. And then they what you a lot? Sorry. They hurt me a lot. How? So they call me bad words, which hurt my feelings a lot. All right. 
and then they hurt me with the spoon because they he said that he would take the spoon just in case in other words he took the spoon with him in the taxi oh okay that's why I say they're keeping and whose car did you go on uh, my mum it's not our car it's a taxi oh you went in a taxi and the taxi knows about it and what taxi did you get where do you know where from and then they go into details about the taxi so just it was a normal black cab um, and so you've gone in the taxi and you've driven around and you couldn't see it the house that they were looking for and then after that and after he told me to my mum told me to show Mr. H's house and I was like um, it's just over there down that road and then there was just loads of houses lined up and then she said and then after Q went with her to show her the house and then after I stayed with Abraham in the taxi and then when they came back my mum took me and then she said no that's the wrong road that's not Highgate or anything so they go into some detail about how she was basically just guessing you know and and sort of randomly pointing at houses to to say he lives there no he lives over there the question is why were, were their mother was ella why were ella and abe so intent on pinning something on that particular teacher the answer is very simple he was the teacher who reported them to the social services that's it. That's what it was. That's what it was all about. So they determined that he must be in the cult. I don't think they believed he was in the cult. I think they believed that they wanted to destroy his life. So then he describes the um, the wardrobe with the secret doors, and she and she says, "Yeah, that's because that's from the Zorro, the Mask of Zorro. It's from the Mask of Zorro." Yes, because the leader of California, he's got this kind of secret passageway from the wardrobe. I just saw that, and that's when the people peeked at him. He was going through the passageway. So then he, w and then, you know, she goes into a description and about, you know, how people got their heads cut off and so on and so forth. Um, so then he, they start to talk about their visit to the doctors. So you've been to the doctors twice, and they said a couple of things, says, says the interviewer. But then I said I was really hoping that they would find some scars or something. Why? And they did find us some scars, and I have no idea why. You don't know why? No, I have no idea why. I was like hoping. I was hoping for that to happen. Why was you hoping they'd find some? Because, I will, because they'll say, you didn't have any scars. So then I thought, I will get in trouble for that, for not, because I don't have scars. Then, they'll be not, then I'll get in trouble for not having scars, basically. So has anyone ever put anything into your bum? She shakes her head. What about into the, you call it your front bum as well? What about into your front bum? No, it's only Abraham which kicks my privates. He kicks your privates? What do you mean? Whenever I've been in Morocco, he had his big boots because it's muddy there because it's in the mountains and he put, he just kicked me right in my front private. So she has not experienced anal or vaginal, vaginal rape and that was clear in the in the medical examination they said there was no um, no sign of anything in her vagina so then they start talking about the plastic willies and she says that was all not true and she and she again said, tries to say that her friend had shown her on her iPad and showed her a picture of a willy sticking into a bum she says that this all happened a couple of years ago so when they were maybe about seven um, and I so I just remembered it she says from memory straight away and I just said um you know they stick plastic willies in my bottom you know Abraham and so then the the interviewer says so how did Q know about all of that because I told him because that time when that um, when I told Q that day when uh, X showed me her iPad mini that she showed me this kind of stuff and he said ew that's yucky that's yucky what she done and which is pretty much the response that you would expect from you know a child at that age so can I make sure so your dad has never done anything you don't like no he's fine and he's good okay so you made this up because because of all the stuff I remembered what I saw everything but it's all just because of Abraham because he keep on hitting me he keep on telling me what do you mean keep on hitting you 
Well, he keeps like saying, like, I'm going to not live with them. Like, I'm going to, he's going to dig a hole in the field and dig me into it and then just leave me there until I die, until I drown because they're going to pour water on the top of me. And after that, I got too scared. And where did all this happen? Morocco. Did it happen in England at all? Now he's checking to see whether it happened in England, because if it did, he could have pressed charges against Abraham and Ella. As it happened in Morocco, there would be no way for them to gather evidence outside of what the children said, and therefore they wouldn't be able to press those charges in the UK just because of jurisdiction. So that's actually a question that we've been asked. If, it's, if this was not true, why were Ella and Abraham not arrested? Simple. They did all of their severe abusing in Morocco where they couldn't get caught. And I suspect that Abraham had enough experience with the law. If you look at his criminal record, you know that he's quite an experienced criminal, not a very good one, but an experienced one. And he is well aware of jurisdictional issues. Um, so has he ever done anything in England? No, always in Morocco. And so they go over that. Did he tell you that he heard um, that he heard my father's voice? And the interviewer says, I've heard something about on Skype. No, because he said he heard, said he heard his voice on Skype. Yeah, well, that wasn't true. That's not true. And then he says that I'm lying because he says, I can see through you that you're lying. And I don't I don't believe that. Yeah, because he because this is what he does. He believes in lies. And she sounds quite indignant as well. She should um, not in the truth. He doesn't believe in truth, just lies. He believes in lies because I lied to him all this time, because that's why I kept saying, changing things. I kept on saying, oh, my father done that, and then he done that, and then after I kept on changing things, because I don't know what to say, that's why I keep on getting hurt, and that's why he thought I was lying. Because she was basically desperately trying to make up the story that she thought he wanted to hear. So you hurt your ear as well, the doctor said. There's something wrong with your ear, is that right? Um, then she talks about having had an infection and she had a special spray and she doesn't really know why she has scars on her bum. Um, and she says, maybe when I was having a bath, I don't remember, but maybe I slipped or something, which I mean, people have gone, oh, well, isn't that a ridiculous excuse? Well, of course it's a ridiculous excuse. It's because she doesn't know. She's making it up. She just said that. Um, and the other thing um, we spoke, things we spoke about, right? None of that's true. Well, that's, yes, but the thing is, when he had just started, I was just fed up and um, was just thinking that I don't care if I go to jail. I think I deserve to go to jail for lying so much. So she's talking about being uh, this thing, as I was saying, being caught between the police and Abraham. Um, and it's a terrible position for a small child to be in. So he reassures her and says, you know, don't worry, as long as you tell the truth, every, it's fine. And then she says all about that church, all, what about the, what was his name, Father P, all of the rooms, all not true. And he says, all not true, okay. That's why I was so worried that, that's why I was so worried that you won't find any skulls in the room, which of course he didn't. The rooms are true, not the secret rooms, but there's the nursery room in that, all of that is true. And I was so scared that you won't find the skulls in the church. And then I was so scared and worried. So, and then he says, it's fine, but you're telling me the truth now. Yeah, that's true. Good, so you said it because Abraham kept going on at you. You said he Abraham has hit you and kicked you and said things, that, but that was all in Morocco. And she says, Abraham is the whole problem. He's the whole problem. He made, he just, I don't know, he just, I don't know what he'd done. She's just completely at a loss to describe why he has done the things he has. And why has your mum let this happen, why do you think? Your mum's let him speak to you. My mom believes him. She believes in lies too, like Abraham. Okay, where was she when he kicked you? She was just like at the front of Abraham. No, she never, um, and why do you think she let him do it? Did she try and stop it or? No, she never done that. Never, never, and shakes her head. She'll never do that. Why not? Because she, one is because she loves him so much that she'll never shout at Abraham. But Abraham, when he's angry at me and Q, when he says we lie, then he says swear words in front of my mum. <laughs> Clearly to a child, this is like serious stuff, man. 
who's saying swear words in front of your mother. Whoa, man, that's really, really bad. Um, okay, so before Abraham was in the house, I know when we met you, you was vegan, wasn't you? Raw vegan, is that right? Yeah. And then they talk about how they had been vegan, but um, before Abraham showed up, her mother, their mother used to let them have treats from time to time and, and would have, um, you know, let them have things that Abraham wouldn't let them have, like boxes of cereal. And so with that, you call Abraham Papa Hemp, don't you? Yeah, he told us to. Why is that? Because he keeps on saying, I saved you, P, so you'd better call me Papa Hemp. Okay, he saved you. How did he save you? He said that he saved us from my father. Okay, and I thought that that was just so stupid what he said. Do you like calling him Papa Hemp? He says he's my fa my real father. What do you think? And then I then he lied about he lied about him being my mum's sister. His mum no my mum's brother. To who? So he lied to me in Q. He said that he's my mum's brother. Oh okay, which isn't true. I thought that is so not true. My mum would have been black like him. And then my grandma, my grandma would be black like him too. And his, well, actually, yeah, his father and his mother would have been black. Well, my mother's mom and their father, they would have been black too. If Abraham was my mom's brother. Okay, if they weren't, if he wasn't, he wasn't my mom's brother, then he'll be white or he'll be brown and my mom would be white. So clearly she's thought this through very carefully and she's not buying the Abraham is her mother's brother business that's probably at the point when he was saying that they had to call him Uncle Hemp. Um, and then he later would change that to Papa Hemp. So what do you think about Abraham now? I think he's just, I don't mean to be rude, but I think he's just an idiot. That just cracks me up. I'm sorry. It's just, I think it, she's so clearly not wanting to violate any adult norms. And calling someone an idiot is pretty much the worst thing she can think to say. Okay, and what is it that you're able to tell me now that you wasn't able to tell me before with Abraham? Because I was, I thought that before I was too scared to tell. But then after, when you mentioned that it's true or not about the babies, then I wanted to tell you because I thought you'll never believe me again. And when I lied before, but then you mentioned it and I thought you might believe me. Did you think you'd been caught out, did you? No, I thought I would get in big trouble for like saying all kinds of stuff like that and that and that. Yeah, okay. No, you're not. And as I say, you're not in trouble, but thank you. Now, and where is it that you'd like to stay if you should? And then she ta says she'd like to stay at her at her foster carers. And so he says, okay, what we'll do, we'll have a little break. And I'm just going to have a little chat with Carl, his, his co-worker, just quickly, just to make sure there's nothing else we need. And then I'll have a chat with your brother, okay? And that's... That, you know, that's how that one ends. The pe people who believe that the hoax was true have claimed that the little boy doesn't retract his statement, that he actually sticks with it. I think you'll find as we go through, and if you read the transcript for yourself, and I'm not recommending that you watch the videos because the videos are illegal in this country as well they should be. They should not be legal anywhere. Um, those children have an absolute right to privacy, and I feel awkward even reading their words because this was not material that should have been allowed out into the public sphere, and we all know who we can thank for that. So when we was in the car, this is the, the interview we're talking, when we was in the car, you desperately wanted to tell me something, but I asked you to wait until we got here before we talked. So what is it that you really wanted to tell me? And... He, the little boy says, I want to tell Abraham, like, he accused me, like, he, like, when he says, does your dad hurt you much? Yeah, does your dad, does he hurt you really bad? And I said, no, and I say, no, he doesn't. And he say, yes, he does. And he accused me. And clearly being accused is the worst thing that the little boy can think of. Like, how, how could he do that to him? It was, and essentially what he's saying is he, he accused me incorrectly. Okay, and then what happens? And then he says, does your dad hit you really hard? And I said, and I say, no, he doesn't hit me hard. He hits me softly, so I like just to remind me. So he's basically sort of softening the story for Abraham to say, oh, no, he doesn't hit me hard. He just hits me a, just a little bit, you know, so that Abraham will get off his case because he's admitted 
that he, that his father hits him, but he's just saying, no, it wasn't very hard, you know. Okay, and then what happens? And then he said, yes, your dad does hit you really hard. And I say, no, he doesn't hit me hard. He hits me softly. And so that was it. We talked in two other interviews, didn't we? And then they go over the thing about the truth and how they were supposed to have told the truth in the previous interviews. And so he says, well, was what you told me the truth? Yeah. So all that stuff about the babies, yeah, and the church and all that. No, no, the babies? He, um, no, well, there is some of the babies killed, yeah. W okay, are you sure? Yes, but not much. Not every day, not every single day, like killed. No, no, like not like that. So he's backpedaling. He's trying to say, you know, I said that, but I didn't really say that. I was not, I didn't really quite mean it. It was not as bad as I suggested. But he doesn't really want to say, okay, I lied. Because he's in the same position, he's in the same predicament that his sister was in. They've been in this together. They were, they were both told that they would be arrested for killing the babies. That was what Abraham told them. He, they believe that if they lie to the police, they're going to be arrested and put in jail. But if they don't do what Abraham tells them, they're going to be beaten. It's really rock and hard place time. It's so painful. And he's doing his best to try to say, well, okay, so um, I only told you most of the truth, not all of the truth, um, but I did tell you most of the truth because he doesn't want to get in trouble with the police. It's, it's, just, it's just that simple. It's not because the police brainwashed him or gave him drugs or gave him like certain satanic symbols and hand symbols or whatever it, hell it was supposed to have been. It's really simple that he didn't want to get in trouble. Neither did his sister. It's such a simple thing and people just refuse to see it in that light. Okay, because I heard you watched a film Zorro, is that right? And then they go talk about the film Zorro. There was someone killed there, weren't they? Because the way it sounded, it sounds to me similar to the way that you told me about the babies. So he's giving him a bit of an out. He's saying, well, you know, it kind of sounds like maybe you got a little bit mixed up. And that's why I was wondering, are babies actually killed? Or is it something you've been made to say? And then he says, yeah, it's something I've been made to say. So are babies being killed? He shakes his head. No, not much. But there is, yeah, but not much. By who? By my dad. Not much. And, shakes his, and he keeps shaking his head. Are you sure? Yeah. It's okay if it hasn't happened. It's okay as long as we talk about it now, okay? And this is the part where people say he's, being, he's bullying him. In fact, what he's trying to do is give him a graceful out. Because no one likes being caught in a lie. And when you're caught in a lie, the first thing you tend to do is to tell other lies to try to cover up the first lie. And whoever said, whoever it was that said children don't or can't lie, clearly has never spent a lot of time around children. So, he, and then he says, so I lied about it. No, no, because he made me say it. Okay, so let's, there's two things. So first of all, you say you lied. So let me just be clear. Are babies being killed or not? And he shakes his head very vigorously. No, no, they're not. No, he made me say it. Who's he? Who made you say it? Abraham. How did he make you say it? When I said, when I, when he asked me, is any baby killed? I said, no, there isn't. And then he says, yes, there is. He's like accusing me of my dad killing me, him of me, of him helping me killing babies. Oh, okay. And then what about all these secret rooms in these houses and places? No. Are there any secret rooms? So not much. Well, there is. Yeah, but not much, not much. No. What do you mean, so have you ever been in a secret room in any of these places? No, it's not kind of a secret room, though. Shall we start with the church? You told me there was a, st a secret room. Yeah, there is. No, there isn't. There isn't, because Abraham, like, he tried to make me say it. So yet again, we have him caught in that place, and he's trying to sort of, you know, please two masters, if you like. Because the way I... Because the way I went to that church, and I just want to understand where it was, because you said it was in the old, in the nursery, and then the toy room, and then you go into the other door in the toy room. Yeah. 
Is there a door really into that toy, ro toy room? No, because he tried to make me say it, but I say like, I like say, no, 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 not, no, there isn't, there isn't, there isn't, but he tried to make me say it. Oh, okay. You know, because he's a, he accuses me. It's not nice. No, I bet it's not. How does it make you feel when he accuses you? When he accuses me, it makes me feel like, when he goes like, he checks it's not there, and then he will blame me. In other words, he's saying the same thing his sister said, that the police are going to go and check out their story, and they're going to find out that they were lying, and they're going to be in a very difficult spot. They're going to be put in jail by the policeman. You know, that's, this is, you know, so he says, oh yes, it worries, worries me. Okay, and then you told me about lots of other things that happened, about baby skulls and people dancing. And he shakes his head, no. Did, does that happen? No. So, you know what happened? Go on. When he accused me of killing babies, he said, what do you do with the skulls? What do you do with the bones? He like, we were, he were really shouting it out. I couldn't think of nothing. What did they do with the bones? What did they do with the skulls? And I got, to th I got nothing to think of. And I had to say, I had to like, straight away, I had to like say, they were dancing with it. They were tying it on. Oh, okay. And what about, you told me obviously about the swimming pool. So you told me lots of people in the, the, in this disabled toilets and they done stuff with your willy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Even though you said you was only four and you hadn't been to that school. No, they had, they had like, they were friends, like teachers. Like I know I was only four, but like my sister was at the school when I was four years old. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll try and sort out what's true and what's not true. Okay. So the babies, it's not true. No. So no ba babies being killed. No. There's no baby skulls. No. The secret rooms. Are there any secret rooms? No. What about the wardrobes? No. And he look. He looks. Sounds really impatient here. No. Look. That's not true. There's no cupboards. Yeah. Then then Abraham made me say. He said, "What's the secret room?" He says, "What's this? Where's the secret? This Papa. Um, my dad is the main person doing the sex." So he's the main person? Abraham accused me of saying he got the most secret rooms. So he's, again, have you been to a house of your dad's with secret rooms? No. So there's no secret rooms? No. And have you ever been to Mr. Mullins's house? Have you? And, and the, the little boy corrects him and, and corrects his, his name and says, no, it's, it's, Mr. it's H. Have you ever been to Mr. H's house? Yes, um, it's, um, it's, um, it's number five, and it's a uh, number, no, it's number ten. It's from how it's called, Hay Highgate Road. Okay, we went to Hi 10 Highgate Road, do you remember? And it was a block of flats, wasn't it? Remember? Yeah. So you won't get into trouble. Now, see, again, he's confronted him with, this is the fact. We went and saw that it wasn't there. And then he says, so you're not going to get into trouble as long as you tell me the truth. Can we just talk about the truth then? Have you been to Mr. H's house? No, because he's my teacher. No, he's not my teacher. He's my sister's teacher. He's your sister's teacher, so you haven't been to his house. No. Okay, so why did you say that you'd been to Mr. H's house before? Well, my dad actually stays there um, because he doesn't like staying alone. Oh, okay. So he stays at Mr. H's house. Okay. And now after all of this stuff with Abraham, you say he's telling you and he keeps accusing you. Can you remember what things are true and what things aren't true? And that's a really good question because at some point those things are going to get a little bit muddled in the kids' heads. Yeah, you can. Yeah, whatever like worries me, I wanted to remember. Okay, so we know there's no baby skulls, no babies being killed. Your dad hasn't got any secret rooms. You haven't been to Mr. H's house. Okay. Well, actually, um, my dad actually is supposed to be living with um, how's it called Sheffield, but he doesn't have a he doesn't have a house in London. He actually lives in Sheffield. That would be quite the commute. Um, oh, he lives in Sheffield, yeah, with his mum. But you know, when I was on Skype, yeah, I seen I seen on Skype. I see he told me he was in Sheffield. Oh, okay. So does your dad live in Sheffield? Yeah, but he stays with his other friend's house that I don't know, and he stays at Mr. H's house, and some days he goes back to Sheffield. Okay, and do you know, and do you know he stays at Mr. H's house, or do you guess that? Why, no, no, I don't know. You don't know, you guess, or? No, I don't guess, because um, my dad and Mr. H are really close friends, really close. 
Now, this is interesting because his sister has said that his dad doesn't know Mr. H. So it's entirely possible that he just has picked it up and now believes that they were friends. Or he's continuing to say, you know, say that I was partially telling you the truth. It's hard to tell which it is. He does look quite sincere when he's talking about it. And I tend to believe that he did get some things confused in his mind because he was told certain things. And as we've discovered, children will believe that they've been through things if you tell them they have. I remember my brother, for example, when he was four or five years old, used to describe things that had happened in our family before he was born and claim that he had been there. Um, but it's only because he'd heard the stories so many times. You know, they become family legends or whatever. And he would talk about, oh, yes, that time we went camping and, you know, um, whatever it happened to be. And we would have to say, no, you weren't there. Um, and he was adamant that he had been there. And it's not because he was lying. He thought he had been there because he it had a construct of that in his mind. And he was, that was what he believed, you know. So, anyway. So, honestly, just be truthful. If things aren't, I promise you won't get into trouble. Um, if you lied before, I promise. But we just, all it is, I just need to know the truth and what to look for and who to speak to. So if some of it is a lie and you've lied about something, I promise you won't get into trouble, okay? Now this is addressing the issue of are you going to go to jail if you lie to the police? So that he keeps trying to tell him this over and over again because he's aware that the child is fearful of this. And, you know, that, that because they have both said they were afraid that they were going to go to jail. And then he says qu very quietly, so I lied about the plastic willies. How did you find out about plastic willies? None of it was real, none of it. None of it, shakes his head. Okay, so why was you nervous about telling me that none of it was real? Because Abraham, like, Abraham already got you. He already got you of it. And he, um, do you know the first time he ever found out about me and my sister touching? Yeah. It wasn't tr actually true. He accused us. Oh, okay. We actually never touched. I know it's against the law and we never touched. So you never touched. No, we never touched each other. Okay, okay. So you've been to the doctors, though, haven't you? And they said, um, then they, they, the doctor said what they found. What did they, what did they say? Bruises. Bruises, okay. So where were the bruises? On my bottom. And how did you get them? And he just shrugs and says, I have no idea. So, and which is, instead of making up a, a story at this point, he's, he's saying, okay, yeah, I don't, I actually don't know how those got there. It's hard not to interpret that as he's nervous and worked up and doesn't know how to express what he is, what he's experiencing. And he says, don't argue, they do. And then he says, um, then he says, they also have plastic willies, don't they? And I said, no, they don't. And he said, and then, yes, they do. No, they don't. 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 Okay. And so nobody's put any plastic willies in your bum? No. Okay, I heard from one of the doctors that one of your ears is hurt as well. Yeah, and he says, how did that happen? It's because he slapped me really hard. Who slapped you? Abraham. When did he do that? In Morocco, when he slapped me, he slapped me as hard as he could. So why did he do that? Because he said, yes, you're lying. He says, I'm lying, I'm lying, I'm lying. And he looks really distraught when he says this. So what were you doing when he slapped you? Where were you? In, in Morocco? In the kitchen. And my sister and my mom seen me being slapped. So you're in the kitchen. Then what's happened? And then my mom and Abraham. No, my mom and P seen me being slapped on the ear. But that time my mom wasn't watching. She was watching somewhere else. Okay, so your sister saw it, but not your mom. No. Hold on, have I got that wrong? Who saw it? P only. And he shakes his head. So P only. So why didn't your mom see it? Because she was she was doing the cutting up. And he kind of makes a chopping motion with his hands. Oh, so your mom's doing the cutting and he, he said you was lying. What did, what did you say you was lying about? about? About the secret rooms. Okay, so has your dad ever done anything to you that you don't like? No, he doesn't even hit me. So he doesn't hit you? No. 
and he's never put anything in your bum. No, he's really nice, is he? So for the um, for the free, la I can't actually hear what he says. For the free last week, um, that is the truth. What happened? Go on. S the and I, the free last week. I think he might be saying the the um, the visit that they had, the free visit. Maybe I'm not really sure. It's hard to hear what he's what he says at that point. Um, the first time I remember, the first time we went, um, the first, I don't remember the first one. I'm sure, I'm sure I remember it. We, um, the first time we went shopping and buy some food for us and then we went to Topsy Turvy Land, but it was closed. But no, I mean, we ate and then he gave us 10 pounds for our pocket money. That's how, that's, that was the first time he ever gave us pocket money. Who, your dad? Yeah, he gave us 10 pounds. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it's really much. And then we went to Topsy Turvy Land and because we parked near Topsy Turvy Land and we ate in the car, then we cleaned the car and then we went to play, went to Topsy Turvy Land and it was closed. Then it was near it was nearly time for us to go back to the center, and then the next time, yeah, the next time we went swimming to East Finchley. Okay, so you're saying the only reason you said this about your dad was because Abraham kept accusing you, yeah, and you call Abraham something else as well, don't you? As well as Abraham, you call him something else. And he, he gives this disgusted look like, oh, we, we never call him. Well, yeah, he says, when, we, when I call him Abraham, he says, don't be rude, call me Papa Hemp. Even he's not my dad. First, this is how it was. I start, first started calling him Abraham, and he said, don't be rude, call me Uncle Hemp, which explains the whole, you know, if he's claiming to be their uncle, then he's got to be their mother's brother, which doesn't work because he's not black, and so on and so forth. And then I kept calling him Uncle Hemp, and then he like made me trouble. He said, don't call me Uncle Hemp, now call me Papa Hemp. So he was clearly trying to sort of edge his way into the family and, and be accepted as the children's guardian, father. And he's not even our dad. Oh, no, okay. And do you like Abraham? I hate him. I got no idea why my mom and Abraham, no. I know why my mom and Abraham, my mom and my dad broke up. Why? My mom told me that this is why, because my dad wanted to take us to a party, but my mom didn't want us because it was really late. Oh, okay. At night. But we were still, like, still energetic, and I was, like, bouncing around, and then our dad wanted to take us to a, like, we wasn't asleep, like, we wanted to have fun. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do, and, and then the police officer says, he's going to go have a quick chat with Carl, and then see if there's anything else, and it's a quick chance to see if you've got any questions for me. Is that all right? And Q nods. So have a quick think if there's anything you want to ask me. And he leaves the room. And then the little boy sits there. And he sits there bouncing in his chair like this. And just like grinning at the ceiling. And then starts like pulling faces. By, like, you know how little kids do? They like, pull faces by moving their lips over their teeth and that sort of thing. And, you know, fiddles around. and you know, But keeps that has this just... I would call it a triumphant grin on his face, like he's made it. He's made it through. He's not going to go to jail, and he's made it through this entire ordeal. It's, he's, he's done. So he, he smiles when, when the police officer comes back and, and looks a bit shy and says, I got a question. Go on. What's your question? Is Abraham going to see me again? Because I don't want to see him again. Okay. And we'll do our best to say that and put your views across, okay? And he nods. And I don't want to promise any, something I can't 100% say, but what I'll do, I'll be, I'll be telling your mom, I'll be telling social services that, you're, that you don't want to see Abraham again. Yes, but mom will be like, my mom, she'll be really angry with me. She'll be so angry. She'll be like hating me. And who can you tell? And then they talk about who they could tell if, thing, <clears throat> if things got bad at home. Um, in the, in case they were to go home. And he doesn't really understand what that means. So he, they talk, then she, they start talking about their nanny, Gallia, and how she understood that none of what Abraham and Ella said was true, except that she doesn't speak very much English. And then they finally, as a sort of a little postscript, they talk about what happened to Abraham's phone. And Q just, it's, kind of hilarious because by this time he's he's in the clear right he's like totally he's free and he feels like okay that things are going to actually maybe be okay he's being told that he probably won't have to go back to live with Abraham so you know 
that's a win right there. Not going to jail, police officers not angry with him, you know. And so he basically says he actually lost it somewhere in the house, and he just has this, like, like, oh my God, what an idiot. But he actually found it again, and then he forgot about it again, and then he describes where the phone had been lost down the cushions of the sofa. So once the interview is over, they both leave the room and end of story, um, quit. So what does all of this tell us about the way things actually happened? I think it's pretty safe to say that both children were eager to tell that they had been made to lie. They were eager to talk about their dislike of Abraham and what he had done to them. They really didn't want to go back to him. They both referred to him as an idiot and as just some and saying they hate him. What I found kind of telling also was the little boy saying that when their mo- mother found out that he was saying this stuff, she was going to be really angry and she was going to hate him. That's really sad because it essentially means that the children believed that their mother would take Abraham's side against them. And in fact, that is exactly what happened. They read her right. But it's sad that children should have to feel that way. They later uh, would say, when the psychiatrist talked to them, they, I believe the little girl asked if she could stay with her foster parent until she was, I think she said she until she was 15. And I remember when I was nine years old, the age of 15 just sounded so, so old. It seemed like you were practically middle-aged by that time. So, you know, she was basically saying for the foreseeable future. I think it's pretty clear once they got through the fear that they were could possibly have to go to jail or that they would be in trouble for lying and that they you know and that you know they basically expressed this and realized that they could tell the truth and nothing terrible was going to happen to them because keep in mind they had been interrogated over and over and over again by Abraham in almost the same way that the police would interrogate them in the same in the sense that they were being asked questions and being told not to lie it's exactly the same dynamic the problem is with abraham he was enforcing it with physical violence whereas the police were basically just saying you know we don't want you to lie the kids were in a very tough place And it's not at all surprising that they responded the way that they did by sort of partially retracting and then being a little bit fearful and and stepping back from that and then partially retracting a little bit more and stepping back again because they'd just been through two situations where they were being told that if they lied, bad things could happen. Again, I really strongly recommend that you not go looking for the videos themselves simply because I believe that those children deserve their privacy and they deserve that much respect. And that's it for today. Take care. Bye now.